Okay, we mentioned uh, there are two kinds of uh, uh, singularity. Uh, one is isolated singularity, the other is non-isolated. Um, um, so suppose Z0 uh, is an isolated uh, single point of a complex function um, defined in an open state. So, um, so this actually, uh, it's just like a And so, so, um, so Z0 uh, is uh, an isolated singularity of a convex function. Uh, and so we can find a neighborhood of Z0. Okay, Z0. So, uh, so F of Z uh, is. It's analytic. In e prime z zero. Okay. E prime uh, is so-called derived uh, disk. Uh, means that uh, this is actually is the endless. Okay. So the inner circle has radius zero. And the, the outer circle is the it's radius epsilon. Um, so f of z uh, is analytic uh, in this uh, derived uh, uh, disk. Okay. But f of z <coughs> is not analytic. All right, and at uh, z equal to z zero. Right. Or even not defined. Right. So, uh, so this is the situation. All right. So now phi. So, um, so F Z is actually is analytic in this spatial annulus, right? It's a kind of spatial annulus. So, um, by theorem. 16.1.1 uh, FZ has a Lorentz series expansion at uh, Z equal to Z0 okay. so F of Z is equal to summation and from minus infinity to infinity Z minus Z zero turns over. Okay, so um, so we call uh, punctured open disk. Okay, <coughs> in E prime, Z zero, epsilon, in omega. Okay, so with that. Now, um, and so the inner, the, the inner um, radius, inner circle is radius zero. So it is clear that the, the beta the new soup and goes to infinity square root n root uh, n root of uh, the absolute value of uh, coefficients with negative uh, index is goes to zero. Okay. So beta beta so this is beta. Okay. So this is 
that equal to beta. So beta is zero. Okay. And and we know zero is always uh, less than equal to new increment. Okay. So so we know that uh, beta is limit. So we have uh, that. Now, the negative. Right? So this is an important factor uh, for any uh, isolated singularity. Right? So, um, so the beta, the, the corresponding Lorentz series has beta, which is equal to zero. Now, the negative power series summation so the power series and from minus infinity is one uh, cn z minus z zero as power or sometimes we write it in this way c minus n As power, okay. So the negative uh, power series uh, is called the principal power. So, so the negative part, the negative part of this Lorentz series expansion, um, is called the principal part of the function at uh, the isolated single point. Right. So there are two cases. If the principal part. It's only finitely many terms. Okay, so So, um, so if the, the power, negative power, uh, is greater than m, uh, the coefficient is zero, right? But uh, c minus m is not equal to zero, means that uh, this um, infinite power series come to a, a, a finite sum only, right? So if the principal power is only finitely terms, then z is zero. It's called uh, a pole of order n. Okay, and uh, so uh, a pole of order uh, one um, is called a simple pole. Okay, and. Uh, if the principal part okay, has infinite with many terms, okay, then Fz is said to have Isolated 
essential singularity at uh, z equal to z zero. Example. Um, F C C Okay, so suppose the complex function uh, is like this one. So we can see it has a simple pole okay, at uh, z equal to zero as a simple pole. And a pole of fifth order, okay, at uh, z equal to two. Look at here. Uh, in in this term, you will see. Uh, you will think about uh, the the um, the negative term is up to two. So it seems like it, it is a pole of the second order. But look at here. This one we have. Uh, um, a power up to the fifth order. So, so actually, together, uh, you will see that if we expand uh, the, the this function by um, the Lorentz series about z equal to two, you will find that uh, uh, the most negative uh, uh, power with non-zero coefficient is uh, the negative fifth power. So it's a pole of fifth order. Okay? It's a pole of fifth order. And of course um, this is because um, how, 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 how do you know that? Um, uh, in, in a normal procedure you have to uh, convert uh, you have to represent uh, this function by the Lorentz series um, with center at the two. Okay? So um, And you can do such kind of uh, expansion um, by, by yourself. Um, uh, first of all, um, so for example, um, what you can do is uh, the way that uh, you, can, you can think about that. You can let C Z is one of Z. Okay, and uh, so by expansion, you can do the. Uh, so we have uh, um, a B N Z minus two as power. Infinity, right? Because c of z uh, is analytical at the z equal to two, right? So, um, so for this function, so for this function, you, uh, the, you, it has a pole. Uh, I mean, it's not defined at uh, zero. So if we have two here, at least uh, we can find a disk, right? We can find a disk. So in this disk two, right? In this disk, this function is analytic in this open disk. So it has a power series expansion. Okay? And so we have that. Right? So in, in principle we have this one. And we know what is Bn. Actually Bn uh, is equal to G of n to divide by n vectorial. Okay? And so, what is Gn? Um, we know uh, 
the g um, from z is equal to um, minus c minus 2. Okay, g from z is minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3. Etc. So, in general, the s derivative of z uh, is equal to and the n uh, n vectorial n and uh, okay right in bandaction you can you can find the derivative here so so that uh, b n x minus one n n vectorial 2 to the minus n plus 1 and here is n vectorial so we cancel them so you have minus 1 and 2 n plus 1 okay and so so you know what is that that's power okay and then And then uh, we plug into here, so I have a z is, is um, z minus 5, okay. minus 2, So, um, so you see that um, you have uh, um, one, you have uh, two, okay, so you have uh, one, Because you can expand uh, the, the this one. Actually, this is this is uh, analytical at uh, at z equal to zero, and this part is also analytical. Right? So you can expand. You can expand um, both functions. So you can think about this one as so to, to expand f of z as a, a domain series about z equal to zero. You have to expand them. Okay, so so this one and uh, um, um, h one z equal to one over z minus two fifth power. This one, all right. This is is analytical. It's uh, z equal to zero. Okay, so this implies that h one z is summation n equal to zero to infinity uh, c n uh, z to the n power. Okay. All right. Because it's an ending at the end. So we have power series extension. Power series extension here, and uh, and then you know this is equal to um, 
which is equal to H1 0 and factorial is n's power n's power and you will see uh, in particular uh, C0 is equal to H1 and 0 and the 0 factorial so what is H1 0? H1 0 uh, is, is minus 1 is power okay so it's non zero. So the first term is non zero. Okay. And uh, H2, you define H2, Z is 3, right, Z minus 2 second power is also analytical. And the Z equal to zero. Okay. So we have H to Z summation Pn this power. Okay? So now F of Z it's Z minus 1 summation Cn plus Pn. Okay? So what we have? We have, uh, and the Cn is, uh, C0 is, is non zero. So we have uh, uh, minus 1, 2 to the fifth power, Z minus 1, plus uh, C1, plus C, um, C1, okay, plus D0, Z. Uh, plus C2. So in general, I will have, I can find n from 1 to infinity, Cn um, plus 1 plus Bn, Zn. Okay? Alright? So, so, so the least, the, the smallest the x model to have uh, um, non-zero coefficient is so this implies that uh, uh, zero is a simple form of f of z. Okay. All right. So it, it's so it, it, you don't need actually you don't need to uh, expand um, h one z or h two z. It's not necessary, but it's necessary to know the uh, the several. Uh, uh, initial coefficients to check is it whether because we want to find a leading term which it has uh, non-zero coefficient. Okay. So so for H2, for H2 for, for this function, for this part, we know it's analytic at uh, z equal to zero, so that would be sufficient because because that uh, you have power series. All the, the the exponent is greater than equal to zero. Alright, but but for for H one, for H one, Z here, uh, because the it, it will multiply with Z minus one, so you have to know whether C zero is is zero or non zero. Okay, so that's why we can write down uh, this way and to know that. Um, uh, the point Z, uh, zero uh, is a sim simple pole, right? It's a simple pole of the function. Any questions? Second example. Um, this function e to the one of z by power series expansion uh, we know that so we have one over n factorial z n okay and so we can write it from zero to n to minus infinity and uh, one of minus n factorial and the z n okay so we have that. 
And, and so the, the negative, the negative part, the principal part. So, so it implies that the principal part. All right. So, um, so this one uh, is is a Lorraine series expansion. Of uh, okay, at uh, z equal to zero, okay, and so this one okay. so this is already series when you converge uh, in this annulus center zero, the inner the inner uh, circle has radius zero, and the outer circle is infinite. So, so basically, this function is defined at every point in the compass plane, except the origin. Okay? Except the origin. So, so you can see that. Uh, so this is a Lorentz series function at zero. The principal part, right, of e to the one of z at uh, z equal to zero it's, it's okay and uh, zn or we can find it in this way So we have uh, this is this is the uh, principle R, which the principle has infinitely many terms. Thus, that this complex function has an essential. This an isolated essential singularity at uh, z equal to zero. Now, the behavior of the function at a pole or at a, an isolated essential singularity okay, are different. Now, so they have, they have different um, behavior at a, a pole. On and at, at, at uh, an isolated essential singularity. So first of all, uh, let me describe the behavior of a pole. Okay. If a complex function uh, f of z is a pole. At uh, z equal to z zero, then then the absolute value of the function value goes to infinity as z goes to z zero. Okay, in any manner. Okay. Right. So. This is the general behavior. Say so you will grow up. So as 
I think that behavior you can see here um, for Paul. Mm. So in this example, right, as z goes to two, then uh, it goes to then this goes to zero, so so it's going to finish, right? Or as z goes to zero, it's going to finish too. So, um, so this is the behavior uh, of a pole for up. No matter how you approach uh, the, uh, the zero, the pole. So that is um, the behavior. Now, to describe the behavior uh, at um, an isolated essential singularity, uh, we consider an example, which is just the function we derived here. All right, so we know this function. This function has an, an isolated essential singularity. Now the value, um, so as, as z goes to zero in different paths, then you get a different value. Well, so, um, so now, along the imaginary axis, i.e., suppose z is equal to i t, we have so let's see. Suppose that z is equal to i t, okay? And so we have a singularity here, zero. Okay. So as z goes to zero along the imaginary axis, so the major axis, either here or here, okay? So we have. Fit equal to e minus i. E. Okay, so we have this one. One over i t so e t. And this is equal to sine one over t minus i sine one over t by all your formula. Okay. And which has no limit. Okay, as t goes to zero. So as t goes to zero, the point goes to zero along the imaginary axis. But the function value oscillate, right? Oscillate. So 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 uh, has no limit. Has no limit. Now the rule. Now through the positive, okay, so the positive real axis, i.e., z equal to t greater than zero. Then we have f of t is equal to e to the one over t, okay, e to the one t, right? And as t goes to infinity, uh, goes to zero is go to infinity as t goes to zero from the positive part. Now from the negative part. 
the negative real axis. Minus P. Right? Through the negative real axis. And E Z equal to minus P is than zero. We have have a minus p which goes to zero as p goes to infinity uh, as p goes to zero sorry so as p goes to zero right then 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 minus p goes to zero right but the function value goes to zero so it converge. Okay? It converge. So, so it will, if we start from here and go to zero in a number negative real axis, the limit is zero. Okay? But if we approach zero uh, from the positive real axis, we find the value goes to infinity. If we approach zero from the imaginary axis, all right, then the value does not converge. Is oscillating. So, at this isolated essential singularity, the function, the behavior, the behavior of the function near this singularity is very complicated. Not like a pole. For a pole, for a pole, that if a z goes to z zero, the value always grow up. Okay. Always grow up to the empty variable could infinity. Always. But this is very complicated. Actually, furthermore, we can prove. Alright? We next show that e this function text on any text on any given value C E I alpha zero in an arbitrary Small epsilon neighborhood of the universe. So if we consider a tiny, consider a tiny um, neighborhood of the singularity. Epsilon here. Then the function value f of z can take any given value. Okay? Can take any given value. Right? Which is not zero. Okay? Not even zero. How? We shall prove that. So if you want, you, you will want a value, say, uh, All right, you want this complete number, okay? Then you can find a point in this tiny circle, the function value. So we can always find an over some zero, okay? Zero is in here, whose value is equal to this one. You can assign any such value, okay? Other than zero. So suppose you want a c, you want the value is a c. You want you want this, we have 1 over z over c, okay? You want this one? Alright? No matter how small of the epsilon, you can always find a z such that e to the 1 over z is equal to c. You can always find that. Alright? So this is what we want to prove. Alright? Now, so, uh, so we let 
z equals r e i theta. Alright, so we want to find a z, right? To theta. And uh, we need to solve that e one over z is equal to c, right? We want to solve it. And the c is row, we express it as in polar form. Okay, so c is here. And what is that? This is equal to e one over r. Okay. And uh, e minus i theta. Okay? Because we express z as in polar form 2. So we have uh, this one e 1 over r minus i theta. Okay? And so this is equal to e 1 over r cosine theta minus i sin theta. Right? So now, so this is equivalent to saying that E1 cosine theta is equal to rho. Okay? And uh, 1 over R sin theta minus is equal to half and zero. Plus uh, two pi n. Okay. Right? Can be anything. So this this equation equal to two equations here. Two equations. So we can find that cosine theta is equal to R natural logarithm of rho here. Okay, this is cosine theta. And the minus sine theta is equal to R alpha zero plus 2 pi n times r. Okay? Now, we know the square of sine plus the cosine of the square of sine and the square of plus the square of cosine is equal to 1. So we have, so we sum together, so we have 1 equal to um, R square and uh, rho square plus alpha zero to pi n square. Okay, so this implies that R is equal to one over square root of square plus alpha zero plus two pi n squared. Okay? So we can find, so if we know already what is rho, right? We know what is rho, and we know what is alpha zero. Okay? We know what is alpha, we can still have one alpha zero. And uh, r can be chosen very small because when we take n is big, right? Take n big. Right? Remember, we want to solve the z here, right? So we want, for any epsilon, quite small, we just let r to be less than epsilon, right? So we can always select an up and big enough, right? Such as r is quite small. Okay? So we find r. Okay? And, and we can find theta satisfied cosine theta equal to this one
in the sine theta is equal to minus alpha is zero plus So it's, so it's very strange, right? In a very tiny neighborhood of the essential, the isolated essential signal region, the, the compass function f has value can be any compass number except zero. Okay? Except zero. We can have any values except zero. Why? It cannot be zero, you know? Cannot be zero. Okay, for some reason, uh, but and so all right. So we have a theorem sixteen point two point two. It's called the fit car theorem. The big Picard theorem says that if a complex function f of z is an isolated essential singularity, right, at z equal to z zero. It, this function, this company function, takes on every value with at most one exceptional. Value in an arbitrary in an arbitrary small epsilon neighborhood of zero. Okay. At most one exceptional value. For this example, the expect the exceptional value is zero. It's zero. So um, so this is called the the big Picard theorem. The big Picard theorem. Um, it, it describes the behavior um, around an isolated essential singularity. Okay. So, so pole and essential singularity they are different in nature. Okay. They are different in nature. Analytical. 
layer by assigning a suitable value f of z0 at z0 to z0. Okay? So this is an example to show the idea. Consider the Thomas function, which is sine z divided by z. Okay? And you can see that this function is an, it's not analytical at z equal to zero because you have uh, z in the denominator. Okay? So basically you have when z is zero, you have zero divided by zero, right? So so in this form energy, z is not defined. Right? The function is not defined as z equal to zero. Okay. So it's not defined. It's a z equal to zero. But, but if we assign f zero to one to one, okay? Then we, we, we assign, we define f zero to one. Okay. Then F Z. Then the new F Z. So it's uh, sine Z that by Z for Z not equal to zero and it's one for Z equal to one. So now we define a new function. We say F theta. So F theta is it's the same as the original one if z not equal to zero. But we define it to be one, alright, if z equal to one. Then this new function is analytical. It's z equal to zero. Okay? Then so so z equal to zero, right, is a removable singularity. We can remove it. Okay? We can remove the singularity by by assignment of a particular value at that point. Okay. So this is the called um, removal variety. Okay. Um, some properties of zeros for function. Okay? Um, a zero okay, of an analytic function okay, on an open set omega is a point in Point z zero in the open set such that f of z zero it's zero. <laughs> so the value if if a function at some point is value zero, then this point is called a zero. <laughs> okay, now. Um, Z, Z zero uh, x uh, a, a zero of order m if uh, if uh, f um, zero is zero by f <coughs> I'm sorry <coughs> and the first derivative is value zero at zero zero z sub zero. <coughs> up to um, <coughs> up 
But but um, Fm. So um, the zero of order m is that um, up to uh, m minus one, um, um, the f, um, the derivative um, of f up to order m minus one has zero value at, at z sub zero. But for the m's derivative, the value of the m's derivative at z equal to z sub zero is not equal to zero. So this is called so that means that uh, the expansion, the expansion uh, x from m to infinity, okay. So the expansion we start from. So the first non-zero coefficients is when n equal to m. Okay, so, so this is this is the power series expansion of <coughs> f of z at uh, z equal to z zero. Okay. So if uh, z sub zero is a zero of order m. Then this is the power zero expansion of the function <coughs> at uh, z equal to z sub zero. of f at z sub zero is zero for all n. Okay. Right. Then z equal to z zero uh, is called an essential zero of f of x. If you have an extended zero, something happened, something special happened. So, so let me uh, characterize the. Let me state the behavior. B. Essential zero in a domain. So suppose f of z uh, is an, an analytic function on a domain. Remember, a domain uh, is a connected open set, right? So it has only one component. If connected, it means that any two points in this domain can be connected by a chain of uh, nine segment, okay? So it's connected. So suppose f of z uh, is an analytic function in the domain. If this function has an essential zero in D, then 
this function is the O0 function. Okay? So, um, if we know a domain, right, in a domain, this analytic function has an essential zero. This is means that, that uh, for any n from 0, 1 to 3, okay, the, the nth derivative of f is zero at it. This is zero. Okay. And so, so this is very special. But this is true only for a domain. So if you know uh, z0 is a so 0 of uh, an initial function of z, then we can find a neighborhood. We can find a neighborhood. For any z in this neighborhood, f of z is not equal to 0. For all z in the punctured, for all z in the punctured open disk, that uh, this function is non zero. So it's co isolated because this zero is being isolated. Uh, other zeros must appear in outside of this neighborhood. Okay? So this is called um, so zeros are isolated. non-constant analytic function cannot have too many zeros. Before that, I need to find a concept. Right? So let E be a subset of, of C, the complex plane, a point Z0 in the complex plane is called a limit point. 
anemia point of this subset E if every neighborhood of Z0, okay, every neighborhood of Z0 contain a point of E different from Z0. Okay. So um, you can think about that. Um, suppose this is E, a boundary point. Actually, a boundary point here uh, is a limit point. Why? Because that uh, if you form a neighborhood of Z0, you must have uh, a point Z here in E. Okay? So no matter how small of the neighborhood, this neighborhood contains a point of E. Right? And a point of E. But and this point is different from Z0. Okay? So Z is not equal to Z0. It's called the limit point. Okay, okay so now um, so f of z is analytical, right? On a domain. All right, and we let the capital Z is all the point in the domains which are zeros of the function. All right, so this one is the zero set. Okay, of So we collect all the zeros of the function D. Now, if Z, if the set Z has a limit point, there's a limit point in D, then F must be equal to zero on D. So f is the zero function. Okay. From here, you know, uh, if E is just a finite point, it's just a num consist of, of finite points, then E cannot have any limited limit point. So only E has many, many points that uh, uh, e has a limit point. Okay, so when E is can contain a lot of points, and so so here, if the zero set has a limit point, means that Z has many 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 points. All right. In this case, then um, then F the the analytic function actually is the zero function. Okay, and this, so it's very uh, useful, um, so we can have identity of two analytic function. on a domain. Suppose f and the g are analytic function <coughs> on the domain. Okay, so f and g are analytic function on the domain. <coughs> and 
and the Z <coughs> is the collection of all points such that G and Z <coughs> has the same value. Okay? So we have the same value. If Z has a neighbor point, then F actually is equal to G. So they are the same function. Alright, so so additionally, if you have two analytic functions that look quite different, but you believe they are equal, they are the same, the same function on the domain. Now, this theorem provides a tool to identify that they are the same function. You first form the set Z such that uh, they have the same value. And if you can prove that this set has many, many points, means that the Z has a name point, then they should be the same. Okay? And uh, so, applications um, we want to so we have a question mark we want to prove that we have an identity Sine square z plus cosine square root because what? We want to prove the identity. Alright, and this and we want this to be true for all z in the complex plane. We want to prove that, right? We want to prove that. Okay, and so so we find this we define this as f of z. We define this as g of z. Okay. Now since sine square x plus cosine square x equal to 1 for all x in R. Okay? So the z such that right in here contain what? Okay, R, right? So R the whole real line. So this is a, this is whole real line. The whole real line is contained in the set Z because we have this identity. Right. And but R itself, every point is a limiting point of R. You know, every point. So every point on the real axis, right? You know, any neighborhood contains a real number, right? The same cell. So we know that. Every point in R is a naming point of R because because R is this is, is it is continuum. So R is continuum. Okay. So every point of R actually is a naming point of R. So. All right. So you have many many naming points. By so by theorem sixteen point two point D. Okay, so we have F Z is equal to G Z on P. So here is just on C. And so we prove 
I just that it means that sine square z plus cosine square z is equal to one. Okay. So with this method, many identities or real numbers can be extended to identities for complex numbers. It's quite easy, right? You don't need to prove. <laughs> it's just automatically true, right? You can you can extend them by applying the theorem. Okay. So so just one moment, you get a lot of identities for complex functions. If you know some identities for real variables. So this is the power of this function. Of these functions. Okay, so I have a lot to say, but the um, time is too short. So I have to move on and, uh, and ask you to uh, read the rest of my uh, supplements for the second section. Alright, so now I have to uh, jump to the residue device method. Okay. Alright, so now consider a complex function. which has an isolated singularity right <coughs> at z equal to z zero okay so suppose the complex function um, has an isolated singularity at z equal to zero when we say isolated singularity means that the function is analytic Right? And in a neighborhood of this singularity, right? Except this singularity. Now we let QC okay, to be the principal part. Right? So this one be the principal. of f of z at uh, the singularity point, right? As we mentioned, uh, around these singularities, the, the, the Humphreys function has Lorentz expansion, right? We have Lorentz series expansion around it. And so we have the, the, the principal parts. If the Singularity is a pole, then this principal part consists of only finite many terms. But if the isolated singularity is essential, then this principal part has infinite many terms. Okay, this is what we just mentioned. Now, we let gamma right, be a closed path. in C such that this singularity is not contained in the image of the cross path. Okay? So now we have this situation. The distance function um, 
z minus z is zero. Okay? So if we measure the distance from a point z to this is in the point z is zero, this distance from is continuous. Okay? And this continuous on the complex set. Complex set uh, is closed in the bounded. Almost done. Alright, so we have section, we have that. So this is gamma star. And we have z0 here. So we have z0 here, right? And the distance function, the distance. So z is here, the distance function. Okay, f of z is defined to be the distance, okay? So this distance function, uh, it's continuous, of course, right? And it's continuous on the complex set because the because the image of a cross pass is curls and also bounded, must be bounded. Okay, and so uh, by the spring, so um, So the distance, right, has a minimum, right? So we have, so that's the minimum d1 and the maximum d2. Okay. So you can have a minimum. So uh, so. From here, and we know that the, the minimum could be here. The distance. So this is uh, this is d one, and the maxima. I think the maxima would be here, right? So this is d two. Okay. So that, so for every z on um, the curve, all right? The distance from uh, z zero. Uh, it's D1, between D1 and D2. So, so thus, alright, gamma star is contained, right, is contained in the closed angulus. Right? Um, B bar is zero, R uh, one, R uh, two, with where? R uh, uh, one is greater than zero, uh, but this angle D one, this then D two, and um, this then R uh, two, okay? So now, so we can form <coughs> So this is, this is R1 and we can have R2 Big uh, annulus here. So the so okay. So R star, R star will contain in in the annulus. Okay. So you can see that the R star is contained in the annulus. Now, since 
the Lorraine series Okay, this is a rain series has, has the converging open annulus A V0 zero, zero to infinity. Okay. So so this Lorentz series because it has zero positive part. When you have the zero positive part series, the alpha actually is equal to zero. So one over alpha is infinity. And because we have uh, singularity, isolated singularity, so we know that the, the, the suit of the S root of S value of this coefficient goes to zero. So beta is zero here. All right? So this domain series has the convergent open analysis, which is this one. Okay, which is this one. Right? So this Lorentz series, so it converges, right? Converge uniform in the cross annulus A B zero. R1, R2, okay? This curves anyway. A ball? Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Last time I, I, I should put A, so it's not D. Okay? Fine, theorem. We mentioned that uh, last Tuesday. Okay, so this implies this implies that the Lorentz series okay, come this Lorentz series minus n okay, converges. Uniformly in our star. Okay? Uh, so the Lorentz series converges to the cross annulus of core. And then, of course, because gamma star is contained in the cross annulus, so the Lorentz series converges uniformly in the image of the cross path. Okay, so now um, so now by theorem fifteen point five point three. Okay, this section is about uniform convergence. We have we have that two pi i. So the light integral, right, divided by two pi on, and this is Lorentz series. So it's a it's a series of of functions. Yeah. Because of uniform convergence, we can exchange the infinite sum and uh, the integral. Okay, so we have summation okay. and uh, here is C minus N zero and BC. Okay. Right? So so this is theorem fifteen point five point three. So this is because we have inborn convergence. So we have that. Now, 
by the definition of index function. Okay? I n d comma c. 1 over 2 pi i. 1 over 2 pi i. And equal over comma. 1 over z minus z is 0. So when n equal to 1. Okay, when n equal to 1, d z. This one is the index of z with respect to the cross pass gamma. Okay, so this is the one number. And uh, for n greater than equal to 2, it, it, this one is the derivative of an analytic function. So we know that, and we know that We know that. Okay. Actually, we mentioned that in the remark in, four, in chapter 14, in the section 2, we know that this is 0 because uh, this one is a derivative of the analytic function. Okay? When n within u the 2. So, so that uh, this is 0. Okay, so, so now the infinite sum, except one term, they are, the other terms are zero. So the only one term is what? Is when n equal to one. So we conclude that one over two pi i will do the line integral of the principal part is equal to c minus one times the index of z. Okay? So we have this nice formula. This nice formula here. Okay. Now, in the special case, that uh, gamma is a simple rose. Oh, I forgot to put, this is index of z0. Uh, I have to put z0 here because it's about z0. Okay, sorry. So now, uh, suppose gamma uh, is a simple cross uh, path in a neighborhood of z0 okay. so gamma is a simple cross test uh, in the punctured disk okay. uh, which enclosed z0 and uh, it's oriented Counterclockwise okay. Then we have two pi i remember that uh, this one is equal to c minus one. When we derive the Lorentz series suspension, so which is uh, by theorem 16.1.1. Remember, um, when we have a uh, Lorentz series suspension, um, the coefficients can be obtained from, so remember that. In here we have Cn of pi i gamma uh, 
n plus 1 being 0, cn is here. So C minus 1 is what? It, here is, is the Fz, right? Is this line to go. So in that theorem, we know how to compute Cn when we have a Lorentz series extension. Okay? So we have that. And so in particular, C minus 1 uh, is just the line integral of this. Alright? And so. So now, and uh, we know index of gamma is zero is equal to one because it's simple. Okay. So, so that uh, we have two pi i gamma f of z is z is c minus one is equal to c minus one index of gamma is zero. So this is equal to 1 of 2 pi i, gamma, to z, and to z. And so we establish that uh, they are equal. Okay? So, the, so the integration of f of z, f of z, right, of, and divided by 2 pi i, is equal to the integration of the, only the principal parts. Okay? Only principal parts over the same cross path. And uh, of course, this is uh, true for simple closed path. Right now, we give the special name. This number. C minus one. C minus one is the coefficient of uh, of uh, um, the, the the minus one index in the Lorentz series extension. Okay. So this number is called the residue of f at okay. uh, z equal to v zero. Right, and it would be known. Okay. C minus one would be residue at z equal to z zero of the function f of z. Okay. So of course that uh, if f of z is analytical at z zero, c minus one is zero. So the distance is zero, but if if f of z has a singularity, a singularity, right, at z zero, then the ratio may not be equal to zero. Okay, it depends. It depends. Okay, it depends. So, so this is called the ratio. So this in particular we define the residue. And I provide some uh, method uh, to compute the residue for some simple cases. So please. So they are methods to compute the residue. Okay. And uh, please look at um, the textbook or my lecture notes. Uh, they are very effective to find the residue. Okay, um, so right, so this identity um, Okay, so this identity, we call it 16.3.2. Point, um, point okay, so we have that. 
in particular. So this is true for a simple closed pass. Okay? A simple flag pass. Um, in closed, which in closed is zero counter clockwise. Right. So, so we establish that. Now we, we, we want to generalize identity. So to generalize that. Identity in 16.3.2 We observe that All right? If Fz is a pole power and isolated Essential singularity at uh, z equal to z sub zero, and if q z is uh, its principal part, okay. So this one uh, is the principal. Of f of z at uh, z equal to z zero. Then we construct new function g of c. This new function is what? It's uh, the original function minus the principal. So basically, we just subtract the principal part, and then what we have it is a power series. Okay, it's a power series. So. So now this new function has a removable isolated singularity at uh, z equal to z0. And then this new function is analytical okay? at uh, z equal to z0. Okay? So, it's, so we use this way to remove the singularity. Okay? So now the new function g of z is analytical. It is z equal to z zero. So in general, right? So in general, uh, we can remove We can remove a final number of isolated singularity. Let uh, z equal to z1, z2, etc., of the Zn simultaneously. By subtracting their principal parts, Q1, Z, Q2, Z, up to Q and Z. From F of Z. So that the new complex function f of z right, minus q1z, q2z, q1z, right? So we subtract their principal parts. Okay. So now the new function g of z uh, has removable 
and selective singularities. It's a Z because Z1, Z2 up to Zn. And then it's analytical. At each of <coughs> this point. Okay, so CZ comes to analytical at this singularities. Okay, so now we can we can uh, write down the generalization. Radius theorem. For simple curves as in a simply connected domain. All right, so P is a simply connected domain. F analytic right in D except except for a final number of points V1, V2, up to Z in this simply connected to them. At which F of Z as consolidated singularity. Okay? Now, gamma, a simple Closed pass. Okay? In B, but not intersect with these singularities. Which in close the singular point. You want we to up to the end counter clockwise. So that's the winding number of this single corresponds um, of these points is equal to one. Okay. Then the conclusion then Then this line integral, right, along the simple cross pass gamma of this function of z is equal to 2 pi i times the summation of the residue of the function f at uh, each single point. So the evaluation of such a line integral right, may be quite difficult to evaluate directly. Okay? So this is a, a, a line integral. Okay? But the theorem provides us a means to compute the result. All right? If we can compute the residue of the function at the uh, rows your points. Right? And so we sum over all the residues times 2 by i will be the result. So this is the uh, 
the rate of theorem is going to have. Okay. So, um, so I have got um, some examples to um, give to you in my supplement, as well as you can see uh, quite a few examples, nice examples in the textbook um, to show you how to evaluate a line integral through the race theory. Okay? So to apply the race theory, you have to know some techniques to compute the rest of a function at single points. Okay, and I, um, in my supplements, I provide uh, a couple of means to do so, and also you can look at uh, the textbook. Okay, the textbook provides some tools uh, for you to compute the rest okay. So once you know how to compute rest and then uh, follow the theorem, you can you can. Uh, evaluate the line integral through the rest of this. And, and the rest of my supplement, I use global Cauchy theorem uh, to extend uh, this theorem further. Because this theorem is good for simply connected domain. And uh, also, the path should be simple cross path, right? So I can alleviate this restriction to open set, any open set. And uh, to any cycle, you know, cycle is just just a, a formal addition of cross paths, right? Not necessarily simple. So, but we have to use the global Cauchy theorem, right? To and, and uh, so so the the, uh, the rest of uh, section number three, uh, I give you a. a the most um, general uh, rest of theorem. Okay, this is a format. So in case that uh, you need to use the uh, a, a rest theorem for open any open state and uh, for any cross path, for example, not necessarily simple cross path. But you have to use. You have to know how to compute the one number. Okay, the index, the one number. Okay, because in this formula, the one number, because we keep the cross path to be simple, so the one number is always one, right? So we don't need to, 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 to worry about it. But for general cross paths, you have to consider the one number. Okay? So this, and, and so you and I provide a means how to compute the one number, right? Okay, in, in chapter 14. So with the technique of uh, of, of computing one number and the technique of computing uh, residue, then you can e evaluate uh, um, almost every line integrals you will encounter in complex analysis. Okay, so that is the uh, so this is what I want to say. Uh, so um, so uh, the the final examination uh, will be uh, covered.